I like to think um, that people like science more than astrology. And, you know, I just like not to be controversial or anything. I know we live in America and people have all kinds of different beliefs. But, like, you know, especially in, in high technology fields and in most of business, people, when they're in the research lab, when they are trying to make new discoveries, they are, take, think science is a pretty good way to do it. And for some reason, our business culture has evolved into a place where we often, and I've been in a lot of research labs, university labs, work with all kinds of amazing technologists, and their first exposure to business is often, hey, I had this amazing breakthrough discovery thing that I've invented, and I want to turn it into a business. And it's like, okay, um, take everything you know about science and erase that. Uh, now I need you to tell me what's going to happen in the future. And I want you to make it happen with the power of your mind, okay? Like with perseverance and vision and determination and kind of grit. And, you know, like depending on who exactly listened to the startup world, like exactly which personal attributes are absolutely essential. Um, but, but the basic idea is if you have the right stuff, things happen in the future. And I don't know, when I was taught that the first time, I was like, okay, I guess that's just, that's what it means to be in business. I assumed that smarter people than me had kind of figured it out. And as we've seen, you know, over the last few years, when you start to look at those practices through the lens of science uh, and bringing in, of course, as Lean Startup does, ideas from lean manufacturing and customer development and agile development, like there's all this work we can draw on to say, wait a minute, this, that actually doesn't make a lot of sense. You can't predict the future and less so every day, you know? So, well, what, what do we do then? How do we make forecasts and plans and how do we figure that out? So I, I feel like putting together a theory and, you know, startup people tend to be more practical and not always like, oh, we're going to talk about theory and these abstract kind of, I, I get that. But I feel like a little bit of theory goes a long way. To say, like, here's an integrated set of practices that can help us answer what I always consider to be, like, the, the timeless, frustrating questions about entrepreneurship. Like, uh, so-and-so is on stage, and they made a lot of money. And they say, if I do what they did, I'll make a lot of money, too. And it's like, how do I know if that's true? How do I know that, first of all, that they even did what they said they did? Right, like when you see what you read, see what it says in the like Harvard Business case for, case study, but like, is that really what happened? Um, first time someone wrote a case study about me, I remember the case writer was like, "Okay, this dilemma you faced, uh, it kind of seems like kind of obvious what the right thing to do was." I was like, "Oh, gee, thanks." Uh, so <laughs> and you didn't do it. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. And so they're like, uh, can we, "You mind if we change it a little bit to make it more complicated, difficult for the students?" I was like, what do you mean? They're like, well, you know, because like the term, it was like about which funding we should take. And they're like, yeah. the terms were like this. Like, we're just going to change them up to make the terms different. And then and I was like, but that's not what happened. They're like, yeah, but. Hey, everybody, I want to tell you about DigitalOcean, the best place for you to deploy your new application. It's super easy. It takes just 55 seconds to launch on an SSD drive in the cloud. Super fast, super easy. And um, hey, listen, uh, they've got 550,000 developers using their product because it starts at just $5 a month. It's super easy to use, and the API is super slick. Um, what more can I tell you about it? I mean, you can go and have a pre-configured one-click image of Node.js, Magento, or Docker, or you can do your own custom uh, infrastructure. Pick what you want, obviously. Their clients include TaskRabbit, Universe.com, Flywheel, Compose, and us here at This Week in Startups. And with hourly pricing, you only pay for the resources you actually use, and you're going to get one clean bill. Go ahead and visit digitalocean.com slash twist, digitalocean.com slash twist for a $10 credit. And it's really full circle for us here at This Week in Startups because the CMO, Mitch, was a guest caller on This Week in Startups. And he asked me, Jason, what should I do with my career? And I said, join a high-growth startup. And he did, and he co-founded DigitalOcean. And now DigitalOcean has received tons of venture capital from people like Andreessen Horowitz, et cetera. And... Now they're a partner here on This Week in Startups, and we use their product. How full circle is that? The only thing that hasn't happened here is I haven't invested in the company yet. That's what's killing me. I'm reading this ad going, oh, my God, I need to angel invest in this company. Anyway, listen, DigitalOcean is amazing. We use it. We love it. Any product that you hear me talk about, we only allow products uh, to do a live read like this if we actually use them and love them here at This Week in Startups and myself. So that's the case certainly with DigitalOcean. We love the product. Go ahead and visit digitalocean.com slash twist and get a $10 credit and thank DigitalOcean on your Twitter handle. They're at DigitalOcean. Go follow them. They love to hear from that. And when I see a super fan do that, I always go and give a fist bump and heart it and star it on Twitter. And I personally really appreciate it when you thank the sponsors because they love to hear that our fans are so loyal. Okay. Speaking of loyalty, let's get back to this amazing episode. Mm -hmm. 